and girls, my name is James Hutton, and this is my lane. Alright, so the technical name for this machine is a Tesla coil. This is actually the second one that I built. The first one I built when I was in grade 11, and it was actually featured in the Burlington Post, and then I sold it. Um, this one I built in grade 12. It's twice as powerful. And I built it as professional as possible because I'm hoping to sell it to the Ontario Science Museum because they don't have one of these things. Okay, so I'll give you a little tour. This is the top load. Normally these are like donuts, but I decided to go with the ball form. This can come right off. This is the uh, secondary coil. So as you can see, we got some uh, nice warning labels here. Caution, discharges in excess of 2.5 million volts. Right here, you can see this is copper wire. This is actually over a thousand turns of really thin copper wire. And this whole secondary coil can completely come right off just for storage. So this is the primary coil. It's several turns of copper tubing. And this is the strike rail. This is connected to the ground so that in case lightning comes down and strikes this coil, it will go into this which connects to the ground instead of going through here which connects back into the main circuit. So this is the main capacitor bank. This strand has 10 942C 20P 15K Cornell Dublier capacitors. These things are known to last for years. Um, I've never seen one blow. There's two strands of these and both of them can easily be taken out and then simply placed back in. Okay, so here's the inside of the coil. The biggest thing inside here is this high voltage transformer that I built myself. It is 15,000 volts and 120 milliamps. So it pumps out about 1,800 watts of power. So here we have the spark gap. When the capacitors charge up, a spark jumps from here to here which sends power through the primary coil. You can adjust the size of the spark gap by turning these knobs. When the Tesla coil is on, this vacuum right here sucks air through these two holes. The purpose of this is so that when sparks occur across the gap, it creates ozone, which is more conductive than air. So this just quenches the gap and keeps feeding it non-conductive air. And then on the outside, there's two cooling fans to blow continuous fresh air to the machine. So there's still two things that I need to work on for the Tesla coil. One thing is I want to have a control box right here that all the wires feed into so that there's only one wire coming from the wall to here. And the other is underneath here I have neon lights and I just need to hook them up and it provides a blue underglow. So right here this is what we use to control the power going to the Tesla coil. This is a Variac. It's basically an adjustable transformer. So the farther you turn this, that's the amount of power that's going to the machine. And there are also wheels to roll it around on for transportation. <laughs> 